Film noir is about the dark side, and people either plunge into it willingly or they fall into it accidentally. This was a, a spate of films that didn't deal with America as a dream, but America as a nightmare. Film has gone through a lot of movements and a lot of styles, and film noir seems to still have this attraction because it is a strong expression of the feeling of its time. What's the matter, Jones? Ain't you ever seen a gun before? The term was created by the French after the Second World War. They sort of noticed a shift, a sort of uh, seismic shift in, in American movies where they suddenly became much darker. And they gave the term noir to the spate of films, noir being dark or black. In Hollywood movies, film noir came into being in the hands of certain film directors like Billy Wilder and Robert Siodmak, Curtis Bernhardt, who directed this film. They fled Europe with the rise of the Nazis and were now ensconced in Hollywood. They were critics of, um, of capitalism and saw uh, great inequities in the American system and a lot of them were blacklisted within the next 10 years under McCarthy and uh, McCarthyism. The golden age for film noir took place really at the start of the 1940s with the release of The Maltese Falcon. Bogart Sam Spade is not really a good guy in that movie. He's just a guy that nobody's going to put one over on. And what Warner Brothers did that was very unlike a lot of other studios is that they let women play that part as well. They started making movies where the women could talk as fast, be as tough, back chat, just right up there with the Cagneys and the Edward G. Robinsons and the Bogarts. And Joan Crawford definitely fit that mold. I think Joan's looks were appropriate to film noir because she has that very expressionistic look, but she's larger than life. The big eyes and the eyebrows and those cheekbones and the, the pale skin with the dark hair, she's visually, she is very noir. In Possessed, the opening scenes, which are really great because it's jarring for an audience in the 1940s to actually see Joan Crawford on an identifiable city street. is like, wow, she must have really been out there, you know, a movie star on the streets of Los Angeles with no makeup on. Watch your step. David. Hey, in here, lady. And that was a big thing for Joan. She's like bare-faced when this movie starts, and Joan didn't allow that to happen too many times. She's very, very vulnerable in this film, much more so than in any other movie that I recall seeing her in. And I think this really took the public by surprise, and it's why I think a lot of people consider this to be her best performance. David? David, I didn't mean that. I don't know why I've said such a thing. David, I'm sorry. Be angry. Please don't be angry. Every film noir movie has certain elements of style or content that uh, help define it as a noir picture. Some will have it in spades, others will have it only lightly. The themes grow out of psychology, and, and, and Freudianism is probably the most important influence on it. This is one of the determinants, a major determinants, of the noir style, the popularization of Freud that went on in American pictures in the 40s and 50s, particularly the post-war period. And so the whole film is put together in terms of the psychiatrist analyzing her, trying to get at the problem. I'm Dr. Willard. We're going to help you. Okay, now let's go back. Go back and find out what is your trouble. This is her story, and you're going to see it all from her perspective. A subjective viewpoint is a key part of many noir pictures, and Possessed is an excellent example of this. You're very sympathetic because she seems like this very vulnerable character. As the film progresses, the audience is made to share in the deterioration of Louise's mental state. She is alerted to some sort of vision or sounds coming from who she thinks is the, is the dead wife. You are totally in her position. And of course, that's played to very good effect in the movie. Ah! There's a famous quote about film noir that most of the stories seem to take place in a sad city of the imagination, where the city is alienating and cold and oppressive, but it's something that comes out of the character's souls. The city is generally a character in noir. It's the city that doesn't seem to care. The reason that noir loved the city so much is that it presents this sort of impersonal vision 
you know, this impersonal vision of the world, this impersonal vision of this woman who can just wander and nobody really cares. And that impersonality of the individual in, in the city, in the environment, is part of what noir is, a sort of alienation from the city and alienation from your environment, which is very much the case of the Joan Crawford character in Possessed. Go ahead and kiss me. You don't have to mean it. A very central aspect of film noir is the character of the femme fatale. I didn't expect you to mean it that little. They're like black widows waiting to trap the unwary hero, whether they're doing it on purpose or not. Louise is sort of a femme fatale, but not of her own doing. In Possessed, what's interesting is you have a homme fatale. It's Van Heflin who fulfills the role that a woman normally plays in noir, which is being the object of somebody's obsessive desire. Louise, be reasonable. Well, that's fairly reasonable. It's just an interesting gender switch in this movie that Van Heflin plays this part exactly like a femme fatale is normally played. Another aspect of film noir that always comes through is violence. Crime is something that's rooted in the psychology. Everybody has the potential to be a criminal. It takes an, a normal person and puts them in an extraordinary circumstance. Let me go. I'm going to tell him. This is a world that you can't trust and that ultimately can turn on you at any given moment. There are so many crimes in Possessed. Some of the crimes are imagined. Some of the crimes are wished for. Possessed has one very shocking murder in it. You're not going to marry her. You're not good enough for her. Where the hero is trying to disarm her. As far as killing me, well, I don't think you're that good a shot. It all just builds and builds and builds until she can no longer help herself and she has to commit this actual murder. And she goes right ahead and shoots him. He looks very shocked and he falls to the floor dead. It's quite a shocking scene. When you talk about film noir, there are generally there are two things that you're discussing. There's the content of film noir and those plot elements that make it a noir. And then there's the look of film noir. Film noirs don't have to have this extreme lighting, but the classic ones and the classic forms do. It has to express not just what's happening in a scene, but it has to express the psychological depth or problems of the characters in the scene itself. The directors and cinematographers really play with light and shadow a lot more than in a normal movie. And this, by and large, is because they're either A, trying to depict a sinister and shadowy world, or they're using it in a very expressionistic way to depict the inner state of the characters. And in Possessed, Joan Crawford's character is totally confused, she's alienated, she's upset, in fact, she's simply mentally ill. And the camera at all times is expressing this. She's in this dark corner, but she's bisected by these bright pools of light, which express the fact that she's unbalanced, express the, the fact that she can't pull herself together as a character. The, the interplay of light and shadow is a big part of what makes the look of noir. I do think that noir continues to this day. We all have periods in our life where things are dark or not going right. We have disappointments and, you know, small problems which seem to be reflected in these characters who are always in a state of anxiety. Most filmmakers today are, are escapist, are not addressing issues in America, but those that do use a uh, noir style like with Scorsese. He uses it often, this noir style. And it's more than just being sort of a cultural artifact. They still do connect on a pretty deep level. And it's just a, it's a stylized way of storytelling that Hollywood really, really excelled at. And for this period in the 1940s, they did this thing called noir, uh, and it, it stands. I mean, people still really love this stuff. <laughs> 